Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free Fig Newtons. Really such a delicious little cookie. Kind of like a little cookie cake. Kind of. If you've ever had a Fig Newton, which it's, it's really funny for me because I, I make these recipes but I don't really, really remember what certain things taste like because it's been so many years since I've had them. But from what I remember of eating Fig Newtons growing up, these are a really close comparison to regular Fig Newtons. But gluten-free, of course, and they are so good. And the nice thing about homemade little treats like this is you can make them whatever size that you want to. So they don't have to look exactly like what a store-bought version would look like. And of course, one of the, the things I love the most about things that I make like this is I know exactly what goes into them. And so not only are they gluten-free, they're sugar-free, but again, they don't have all of the extra fillers and preservatives. So that being said, before we get to the recipe, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for everyone that has been buying my cookbook. I've gotten a lot of new people come over here from Trent and Allie's channel. Thank you again to Trent and Allie. Thank you guys for all buying my cookbook and making my recipes. I can't say thank you enough. And just in case you're not aware, my cookbook is available and I'll put the link in my description box below. This right here is a paperback, but it is also in a hardcover. And this is what the hardcover looks like. So almost the exact same size. It's a little bit bigger. And of course there is the Kindle version as well. I know a lot of these recipes are on my channel already as videos, but a lot of them aren't. And I encourage you to try some of those new recipes and let me know what you think. But thank you so much for everyone that has bought one of my cookbooks. And always thank you so much to my patrons. You guys are big supporters of my channel and it wouldn't be what it is without you guys. So please know that you guys are so appreciated and I can't say thank you enough. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, the link for that is below in the description box as well. And also my Instagram is in the description box below. You can follow me on, on there too. So now for the recipe, not very many ingredients go into these Fig Newtons. Very much like a cookie, but kind of a cake-like texture as well but so good. So in this bowl, I've got 10 and a half tablespoons of really soft butter. I've got a half a cup of honey and one tablespoon of molasses. And it's in there, but you, it's kind of blended in with my honey. This recipe calls for brown sugar in the crust or the cookie part. And that's why I add in the molasses is to give that caramely flavor that brown sugar would. And as always, I will put the equivalents to regular sugar in the description box with the recipe. And I should have mixed my dry ingredients together before I got my whisk dirty. And that's just fine. We'll actually do that next. If you're like me and you have more than one whisk, it's just fine. So in this bowl, I have three cups of my gluten-free flour mix, three teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. All in here. And then just whisk this together. Really not very many ingredients at all. And as always, everything is at room temperature. Even though this dough does have to chill in the fridge, it still mixes up better at room temperature. And then I also have, oh, probably about three quarters of a cup of extra flour. That will be for rolling out, but we're not ready for that yet. And then my wet ingredients. But first off, I'm just gonna whisk together my butter and my honey till it's really combined. You could do this with a hand mixer, but I find a whisk is just as easy. And once you've got that all mixed together, I've got two eggs. We're gonna go one at a time. And just give this a really good mix until it's really combined. And it will start to look chunky and separated, and that is just fine. Egg number two. I always find it interesting that just one egg, it looks chunky and separated, but after the second egg, it already starts to come together. One teaspoon of vanilla.
And once you've got that all mixed together, we're gonna start alternating between our flour mixture and milk. And this is a third cup of milk. So about a third of my flour mixture, just eyeball it. And give this a really good mix. And now I'll go about half of my milk. I'm gonna switch to my spatula so I can scrape down the bowl, make sure there's nothing on the bottom. Another third of my flour. That was more than a third, but that is just fine. Scraping the bowl as you go. The last of our milk. And the last of our flour. And you can see it's a really soft dough. And then I got myself a cookie sheet and a piece of plastic wrap. And it does look like a bigger piece of plastic wrap than what we need for right now, but we'll use it later to roll out our cookies. You could just stick this bowl in the fridge if you want to, but I find it easier to divide my dough into thirds, put it in plastic wrap, flatten it out a little bit and put it in the fridge on a cookie sheet. Now comes the tricky part. Divide it evenly into thirds, but I'm just gonna eyeball. And I'm not gonna very tightly wrap this up. I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit, just sealing the edges of my plastic wrap but I've left it in a pretty big square. But this way, we're giving ourselves a head start inside the plastic wrap. Don't press too hard. You don't wanna squish it out of the plastic wrap. And it doesn't even have to be perfect. But there's one, another third of our dough, And the reason we're rolling them out into thirds is it just seems to be the easiest way to handle the dough and make your cookie logs. Essentially, that's what we'll be doing. We roll out the dough, put our filling in, and then kind of fold it together. You could just make one really big cookie, but because the dough is so soft, I feel it's easier to manage in thirds. But that is just what works for me. If you have a better method, by all means, use that. I don't know if you can see that, but this dough really is super soft. So there we go into the fridge and then we'll make our filling. And the dough will chill for about two to three hours. It won't get super firm, but you want it to be nice and chilled. And then right here, I've got two cups of dried figs and they're pretty firm. And all I do, some of them have a little stem end here. And so I just take a knife and trim off that little stem end. And then sometimes you kind of have to really get in there to get it out. But trim off your stems of your dried figs. And I've already trimmed the rest of these. And then I just have a small saucepan. We'll dump in our figs. I cook them first and then I put them in the food processor. They're a little bit tough to chop up in the food processor dried like this. 
at least my food processor. They'll just spin around and get stuck. But I find that if I cook them first, then they get soft enough to really make a, a soft filling. To our fix, I've got two thirds cup of water and a third cup of honey. I'm gonna go about medium high heat. Just stir it together the best that you can. Once they start to soften and the honey melts, it will be easier to stir. We wanna bring these up to a simmer and then simmer and cook until they get really soft and they don't really need to be stirred. I'm just making sure that honey is getting dissolved and not just sticking on the bottom. And once you notice that your liquid is getting a little bit lower and your figs are nice and soft, I'm gonna turn off the heat. You want about a tablespoon of lemon juice. So it's about a half of a lemon, give or take. And one tablespoon of butter. And it's okay if it's not all the way melted yet. So we're just gonna pour this mixture into our food processor very carefully. It is hot. Because it is hot, I'm taking out the little funnel insert just so steam can escape. And then on high speed, process this until it's a chunky paste. And this is what we're looking for. If you feel like your paste is too thick, you could always pour in a little bit of water to the funnel while it's processing. But this looks really good. It is gonna get a little bit firmer as it cools off. And even then, you could add in a little bit of extra water if you feel like it is too thick. But you want it to be on the thick side so it doesn't all ooze out when we bake our cookies. Really nothing to it. And I would say all in all, that probably boiled for maybe 10 minutes. And what I look for while it's simmering or boiling is to see how soft my figs are getting. When I feel like they're soft enough to be processed or when about half of the liquid is absorbed. But you wanna have some liquid in there so they process up like this. Again, if your figs were soft enough to process first, you would process them first get them really finely chopped, and then cook them with the water until it's really thick, and then add in the butter and the lemon juice. It really works the same either way. So it's been about three hours. My dough is pretty firm, but it's still kind of flexible. I'm gonna keep these other two in the fridge while I work on this one. And my oven is preheating to 375. I've got a couple of cookie sheets here lined with parchment paper and my filling is pretty firm now. It gets firmer as it cools off, but still spreadable. You don't want it to be hot when we spread it onto our chilled dough. And again, I'm just gonna measure about three-ish equal portions. And we'll very carefully unwrap our chilled dough it leaves a little bit of a film on the plastic wrap, but it doesn't stick. But I am gonna use just a little bit of flour just to make sure that it comes off of the plastic easily. And as I mentioned, we'll be using the plastic wrap to roll up our dough. I'm gonna very carefully flip this over. And if it falls apart, just lightly squish it back together. We don't really need to knead this dough, but I do want to turn it around the other direction. Try to keep it on the plastic wrap. And mine is already falling apart. And that is just fine. If you need to, you can just squish it all together, which defeated the whole purpose of what we did in the first place. But it shows you how easy this dough really is to work with. And we want to make this into a long rectangle. A little bit of flour as needed. 
And this is the most not rectangle shape you might have ever seen. But that is just fine. In fact, I'm going to make it more of a rectangle by moving some of this dough around. And you could use a knife and a ruler and really clean up your edges. But I find that just squishing it together into a rectangle shape is just as easy. And this is where you could roll it as thin or as thick as you'd like. And I'd say that's maybe a quarter to a half inch thick. And now we're just going to take some of our filling and spread this right down the center. Again, just a third of it. And I usually get the, the length of it first and then I'll flatten it out just a little bit more. It's very sticky. But you want to try to make sure it's the same thickness all the way throughout as well. And that looks really good. Now very carefully lift up your plastic wrap and we're going to fold one way and then the other way. And lightly press down onto the filling and then very carefully remove the plastic wrap. And now we'll go the other direction. And again very carefully press down onto the other side of the dough. And then I kind of pinch the edges of the dough just to make that seam sealed up a little bit. And then with a little bit of extra flour, I am going to roll this over just to make sure that it is not sticking on the other side. And a little bit more flour. There we go. And it's not super fragile, but you do want to be careful with it. And I have found that my bench scraper is the easiest way to cut this instead of using a knife. And if you need to, you can flour the edge of it. And then really however many cookies you would like to get. You can make them as big or as small as you would like. But I usually start in the middle. Let me turn it around so I can see better. But I usually just start in the middle And if you need to, flour your bench scraper a little bit. And this is about the size that I like. And then very carefully transfer to your cookie sheet. And the nice thing about plastic wrap is it can help you pick up your cookies as well. And my oven is now ready. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember right, I think the commercial for these particular cookies always said that they're not cookies, they're fruit and cake. Let me know if I remember that commercial correctly. I'm just going to clean up a little bit and just set this cookie sheet aside while I roll out my next part of dough. And again, you can make these as big or as small as you would like. And I always find that the ends are kind of like the ends of cinnamon rolls. They're not the prettiest, but they still taste really good. And one of the things that is also very useful is once you've got your dough all together with the filling and rolled into kind of the log that it is, you could wrap that whole log in plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge or the freezer to bake later. I will say I have not frozen this dough before. So I, I don't have any advice on what it will come out like after having been frozen, but I have made the, the cookie logs and stuck them in the fridge and then baked them at a later date. And those work really well. So let's go a little bit of flour. And you notice it really doesn't stick, but I will say this dough sticks a lot worse on parchment paper than it does on the plastic wrap. And just like I do with pie crust, I usually feel it just to make sure I've got the even thickness. And once you've got that as thin as you'd like it to be, we'll go with our next bit of filling straight down the center. And it doesn't have to be spread out a lot. 
And same as before, use the plastic wrap to help you. We're going to fold over one side, lightly press, very carefully remove the plastic, and now the other side. And lightly press on that side, and very carefully seal your seam. A little bit of flour, roll one way, a little bit of extra flour, and if you get too much, just brush off the excess. And they tell you to try to make them all the same size, but mine are all different sizes. And then very carefully, this end is struggling a little bit, but that's just fine. And they don't spread a lot. They will spread a little bit. Of course, if they are cool right out from the fridge, they'll spread even less. But you don't want them too close together. In the oven for about 15 minutes at 375. Of course, everybody's oven is different. Whoop. Don't slide your cookies around. They look really good. You can see how much they've puffed up. And they're really fat, chubby Fig Newtons. And my cookies, they went for about 17 minutes in the oven. 15 to 17, maybe even 18 minutes, depending on your oven and depending on the size of your cookies. Nice and golden brown on the bottom. This is one of my ends that doesn't look as nice. It's been a very, very long time since I've had a store-bought Fig Newton. But from what I remember, these are exactly like them. And you tell me, where can you buy a Fig Newton this big that looks this good? Not anywhere that I know of, but you can make them yourself and they'll look just like this. And for some reason, I think it's because they puff up in the oven but they do get cracked on the top. Maybe this kind of cookie is something that you've been missing and now you can make it yourself. It's really easy and you don't have to make all three at, at a time. You could wrap up two and stick one or two in the freezer and then just bake them later. Let me know if that's something that you try. As I mentioned, I've not frozen the dough. I don't see why it wouldn't work, but give it a shot and let me know what you think. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next one.